Hey guys, John here from Unbeatable Tech, and I've got a rather geeky video for you today, but I know it's gonna help a lot of people out there. I get the question all the time. Hey John, I hear this term self-hosted and SaaS, or software as a service, but I have no clue what it means. Can you help me understand and what is right for me? All right, that's exactly what answer you're gonna get by the end of this video. Let's waste no time and dive right in. So basically, let's get down to the basics. What are these things. So self-hosted is where you get access to your software's code that you can use on your own server. You basically get all the logic and all the, the software that was built, but not the infrastructure and the server and stuff that it requires to run it. So you own that software and that application, basically the intellectual property to use that software. SaaS, on the other hand, software as a service, is a method of software delivery and licensing where you can access the software via an online subscription. You're basically renting access to the software. So that's the key difference here is renting versus owning. And if you think about like having an apartment versus owning a house when it comes to maintenance and upkeep versus calling the landlords to fix a, a toilet, like it's a lot of the same mentality goes in on the software side as well, okay? So you might ask yourself, what are the pros and cons of each one of these? Let's walk through them together, kind of side by side. What are the benefits of each one of these systems? Because as you will find out, n not in all cases is one going to be better than the other. It's going to really depend on your use cases and your needs, which we're gonna cover in this video. So the pros. On the self-hosted side, gen and I'm gonna use a lot of general ease here because it can all vary, right? They're all individual businesses to make their own choices. But generally, you're gonna find that self-hosted solutions are more affordable. They're gonna give you the ability to customize and develop greater because you own the code. If you wanna dive in there, hire a developer and say, hey, I wanna change this functionality or this workflow, go and do it. If you have the money and the developer, you can make it happen, whereas you don't have that capability on the SaaS side. Um, also on the self-hosted side, sometimes open source software like WordPress essentially means you have global contribution. The entire community is working together like a whole bunch of hobbyists that are driving this uh, thing forward and it, doing it pretty much for free. So open source is a really powerful concept that can create problems as well, right? A whole bunch of people can go in and mess with the code, but it allows you to develop at a much faster clip. And the way we have plugins in WordPress means if you have a problem and somebody else has probably had the problem, a solution is probably out there. You just need to go find it and figure out how to use it. So, and the last benefit on self-hosted is that you own your data. Now, especially around you know GDPR and uh, data privacy, all these types of things, when you put your data for your customers, out there with some other company to take care of you, or if you're using four or five different SaaS, now you have a data protection issue where if somebody says, hey, I don't want my data on your servers anymore, you need to go reach out to all these different companies and have them delete that. So it can be something to consider. On the software as a service side, the big benefits in my mind is it's a managed experience. You generally are gonna have better support, not saying that the support people on self-hosted softwares are bad, but there's simply more variables. You, you choose your own hosting, you choose your own page builder, you choose your own online course platform. And one guy who works for one company is not gonna be as well equipped to help you with all of your stuff you got going on than if you were to use a software like an all-in-one platform that, hey, they know all their hosting, they know all, all the components and they're an expert in their software, therefore they can give beginners generally better support. Also, you're gonna have less moving parts and less management on your part. If you ever logged into your WordPress website and had to update 27 plugins, yeah, it happens. And sometimes you can update one and it can conflict with a different one. So there's definitely more management, more tech that you have to maintain on the self-hosted side that the SaaS takes care of for you. And not to use like overuse the Apple thing, but you can log in and generally it just works on the software as a service side. All right, so now let's be fair. What are the cons of each one of these setups as well? Well, on the self-hosted side, again, we always touched on this, you're responsible for hosting. You're responsible for the security, updates, viruses, compatibility with different plugins, things of that nature. Your website goes down, oh my gosh, it happens. And sometimes, because you're taking all these little individual components and piecing together your own uh, system, you can sometimes have a disjointed user experience. Or there might be like one, Little fly in the ointment where like the user experience is so good, but then you're stuck with WooCommerce and all the stuff that it throws at you. And it can sometimes hamper your goals. On the software as a service side are much different. So 
Generally, I found that SaaS platforms can charge a premium. You know, it's kind of like you go to the Tesla, you get this nice, it just works, it's so beautiful, and it's taken care of, it's managed, white glove experience, they're gonna increase the price on that. Whereas I find the self-hosted side are a bit more scrappy people, and it's a bit more of a race to the bottom and, and when it comes to price there. Um, Another reason why they can charge greater prices is because of the second con, which is a lock-in effect. What I mean by that is, let's say you upload all of your online course content to a software as a service online course platform. If you ever wanna leave, let's say a year, two years later, you're tired of paying their fees, you're tired of whatever, maybe their tech support's not helping you. If you ever wanna leave that platform, good luck. You've got a lot of work to get all of your people out, to get all your data out, to get all your courses out, all your intellectual property out and move to the next platform. You're kind of stuck for life. So from that perspective, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but when you start going and growing with an, a software as a service platform, you're making a pretty good commitment there. Uh, next downside is there's no real way to extend the functionality on your own. So if a if your SaaS platform doesn't, let's say, integrate with another tool you wanna to use, you're out of luck. You can't really pick and choose like you can on the self-hosted side. And the last point there is data privacy issues or protection issues. Again, not a huge deal. We've never run into this where uh, you know our data was leaked or anything like that, at least to our knowledge. Uh, but I do know that because you are in control of your data on the self-hosted side, it's simply something worth mentioning on the SaaS side that the companies have access to the data of your customers and things like that. So the question becomes, which is right for you? Um, obviously it's gonna depend, but I'll give you a couple of kind of general principles that can help guide you in making that decision. So on the self-hosted side, if you're happy to manage the technical side or learn the technical side or hire a developer who's like in your back pocket to help out with your website when things go wrong, you, you probably need to have that proclivity. You need to have that uh, desire to do that. Um, next, if you want a custom solution, I've had some very interesting clients that, uh, whew, good times. There was a lot of custom code. There was a lot of, it needs to be a certain way. You know, there's certain personalities where like, they're not happy with how things are. They want it to be in their mind how it is, and they're willing to spend to make it be what they want. I generally try to steer people away from that mentality as much as possible because it can only end in ruin. Honestly, unless you're planning on building your whole thing from the ground up, you're gonna hit a whole bunch of conflicts. But if you want that custom solution, if you wanna be able to tweak it just so, maybe an all-in-one platform is not for you. And then the last big benefit or the, the personality type for self-hosted is if you're that open source believer, you just want to kind of push that goodwill into the universe and be part of a global, global community building a better internet, open source is for you. Good people. All right, on the SaaS side, yeah, you got it. You're gonna just flip the script entirely. If you want a technical team that's part of your subscription fee that you can reach out to and something goes wrong, that's where you wanna be a SaaS. And then if you're looking for simplicity over customizability or customization, SaaS is gonna be generally what you want. So let's give you some examples because just talking about the details of it, they might still be up in the air. So now let's go into some best in breed examples of each one so you can like see what, what is what and make the decision for what's right for you. So on the checkout software side, you know, there's the big hitters on the self-hosted side is WooCommerce, on the software as a service side is Shopify, and then you've got others on each one. I'm also gonna give you my generally preferred one. Again, use cases do matter, but my generally preferred one on each side here. So under the self-hosted route, you've got WooCommerce, WooFunnels, which sits on top of it, CartFlows, same deal, Studio Cart for very simple, like ClickFunnels like functionality, and Upsell plugin, which is in its own kind of camp there. Of those, I'm a big fan of WooCommerce and WooFunnels. I think they're really good platforms, but it does come with the big caveat of being accepting of some of the complexity that WooCommerce can create in your business. I don't tend to have a problem with it, but I know there are some things you just can't change with WooCommerce and it, it can be a little frustrating. That's on the self-hosted side. And then on the SaaS side, you've got Shopify, ClickFunnels, Kartra, Thrivecart, Samcart. We've talked a lot about most of these platforms. Of the two, if you're going for that standard e-commerce, you wanna have a bunch of SKUs and categories and filters, all that cool stuff, you wanna be in Shopify land. And on the funnel side, Thrivecart is still near and dear to our hearts. All right, next up, for building out your entire online business, like your website builders, on the self-hosted side, WordPress, welcome. You're you're in good good hands here. Uh, you've got Elementor, 
Thrive Architect, Divi, Cadence, Blocks, and on the software as a service side, you're in a different realm. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the SaaS website builders. You've got Wix, you've got Weebly, you've got Lead Pages, ClickFunnels, Kartra, and of these, when it comes to WordPress, I'm gonna surprise some of you out there. Uh, I definitely think WordPress is where to go, but then within WordPress, I'm kind of leaning towards Cadence. Uh, I think that this is a little early still to say this, but back in 2018 or 2019, I, I knew that Gutenberg was gonna take over, and I think we're seeing that shift now. And so all the standard page builders like Elementor, Thrive Architect, Divi, they're fantastic. I still use them on my websites and my clients, but if I were to start over today, I think Cadence has the brightest future, given that it's building on top of the default WordPress community, using the open source thing as well. On the SaaS side, not a huge fan of any of them, but of them, I'm probably gonna say Kartra. It's not the best page builder, it's not the best website builder, but if I had to pick between all of them, I like the idea of having it all in one. I think the all in one nature is good for a lot of people, a lot of personality types. So I'm gonna give it to Kartra there for that. All right, next up, quickly, let's talk about email marketing. On the self-hosted side, you've got things like Fluent CRM. I still need to do a review on that. Subscribe to the channel because I have a review coming out very, very soon on that platform. You've got Groundhog, Autonomy, and MailPoet. And on the software as a service side, you've got the bigger, more well-known names because the self-hosted side for email marketing is still kind of new, still kind of getting there. But on the SaaS side, you've got big hitters like ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign, again, Kartra for that all-in-one, Keep and Drip. On the self-hosted side, I'm really enjoying Fluent CRM. I'm using it personally, and I'm looking forward to releasing my full review on that soon. And on the software as a service side, we have used ConvertKit for years. Um, and it's, it's been a fantastic platform for us. Last category is online courses. Self-hosted, you got things like Tutor LMS, LearnDash, Thrive Apprentice, and Wishlist Member. Those are all WordPress plugins. And on the SaaS side, you've got familiar names like Teachable, Samcart, which actually released their own courses feature. I probably need to dig into that a little bit more in the future. Uh, Kartra and Thinkific. So on the self-hosted side, uh, I'm using and I like Thrive Apprentice. Still growing, it's still getting there. But from the customization and flexibility and the value of having all those tools in one membership is fantastic. And on the software as a service side, again, I'm not a huge fan of any of them, but of them, I think Kartra does the best job of giving that overall experience of having a membership site and the course platform and everything else there. All right, so the takeaway here is that there's a ton of different platforms. You might be feeling like, I don't know if I should choose self-hosted or um, SaaS. So the good news is you don't have to. Generally, you can pick and choose and intermingle them as needed. And that's basically called spinning up a custom stack. So what I tend to do is I go self-hosted on things like my website builder and my online course platform. Um, but then when it comes to things like checkouts and email marketing, I'm more likely to recommend going for a software as a service platform. Uh, I don't want anything to go wrong. If I have a big promotion going out, I want people to be able to give me money. So I'm not, I'm gonna be less likely to want to put all that on my own website where a plugin could update and now I can't take money. That's something I'm not willing to accept most days of the week. And on the email side, that one's a bit more of a pick and choose. I'm currently playing with the self-hosted uh, email marketing platform, uh, but I do also understand that could be something that can really weigh down on your website's load. It might be something that could create conflicts. So it's one where you could kind of put in either camp as you want to and as your budget allows. All right, so I hope that was helpful. That was kind of a crash course in software at like a higher level. I know we talk a lot about individual tools, but I felt like this really uh, would help everybody under get on the same foot, on the same wavelength and help them choose what's right for them. So takeaways here, uh, use what's right for you. If you're the type of person who wants to get in, see how it all it works, see how the sausage is made or whatever, you might lean more towards that open source and uh, self-hosted route. Just understand you're taking on the responsibility of security, plugins, conflicts, all that good stuff. So get ready to get your hands kind of dirty. It's software, so it's not that dirty. And on the SaaS side, be willing to pay a little bit more, but then getting a bit more of that white glove service, understanding that you can't have it exactly the way you want it in all cases, but you can get pretty darn close. I hope this is helpful. These quick videos, walking through all this content is good. Please let me know by hitting the subscribe button, leaving a like, and maybe give me a comment. How's it going? How's your day? Let me know down in the comments down below. And what is your favorite route? Are you self-hosted? Are you SaaS? I'd love to hear, and let me know. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.